So this video is going to have a look at how you would go about applying the general defense of automatism. So the scenario that you've got on the screen now is Educas law scenario. Um, it's 25 marker as, as you would expect. Um, and it's got a range of different defenses which are available to our defendant. And part of your job is going to be going through and identifying the appropriate defenses and then applying them. So as usual, start with the question, then read the scenario, because the question tells you how you should go about reading it and what to look for. So we're going to advise John on what defenses might be available um, if he's charged with murder of the security guard. So this is what happens to John. Um, he begins to experience hallucinations uh, where he thought he was back in the army. Eventually, he's diagnosed with having a small non-malignant brain tumour. So we've looked at insanity and automatism. Small non-malignant brain tumour, that's an internal factor. So that's insanity. Hospi uh, doctors at the hospital decided the condition was not urgent, didn't require immediate treatment. So he's sent home to await a date for his operation. He goes shopping in the supermarket where bright overhead lighting begins to affect him. So is that internal? Is that external? Well, that's external, isn't it? So that should be getting you to think automatism. Um, he took a mop handle off one of the shelves and begins to swing it around like a weapon. Uniform security guard arrived to find out what was going on. John thought that the security guard was an enemy soldier and struck him savagely with the mop handle, causing fatal injuries. So you've got three things there. You've got the uh, hallucinations where he believes he's back in the army and the non-malignant brain tumour. So you might want to deal with that just with the brain tumour or you might want to go down um, the PTSD route. That's entirely up to you and not really going to be what we're focusing on here. What we are going to focus on is the impact of the overhead lights. So we're going to focus on automatism. So, and we're going to be using, as per usual, your state explain apply model. So we're going to say that to be successful, you must show that he suffered a total 100% loss of voluntary control. And you're going to explain this with the case of the Attorney General's reference. If your defendant demonstrates any level of control, then he can't use it. And it's got to be caused by an external factor, as in Hill and Baxter, where uh, and you're going to explain Hill and Baxter hit on the head by, by a stone chased by a swarm of bees. So not something which originates from within. And Bratty defined this as something done by the defendant's muscles without the control of his mind. Usually automatism is a one-off. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but it, it is usually. And you can only use self-induced automatism if they're not reckless as to getting into that state. So as in Bailey, uh, where he took the Valium, which is a calm down drug. Um, uh, sorry, Bailey, uh, where they couldn't use the defense as he was reckless as to becoming uh, an automaton. And Hardy, where he was not reckless because Valium is usually a calm down drug and he had an opposite effect. So he wasn't reckless. So that's your stating and explaining. Because automatism is short, you can do all of your application at the end. And that's what I would advise you doing. If you try and do it as you go along, you'll end up repeating yourself a bit. So it, in that scenario, it's the strip lights. It's not a strong argument. You, the stronger argument is insanity, but it is an argument that you can use. Um, and you need to be discussing, whenever you're discussing automatism, you need to be discussing that internal external factor. So the dividing line between the two, um, and you're going to be using your cases of things like Quick, Hennessy and Sullivan. 